start, can you um, tell me about yourself? I know your background, you, you went to Liberty, you're a lawyer, but can you explain more in detail about you know, how you got to where you are? Yes, so I've always been a current events nut. I always wanted to know what was happening, what's the latest. Of course now, um, when I was a kid, you didn't have social media and didn't have the immediacy of what you can get. But now it is one of those things that an event can happen anywhere in the world and you could know about it in 30 seconds if somebody is live streaming on social media. Um, so I've always had that passion for storytelling and knowing what's going on in the world. But when I went to college, I studied business. I went to law school. I've always been fascinated by law and politics too, but I found that current events thing and that passion for storytelling never really went away. And so when I was in um, my third year of practicing law, I decided I'm really gonna investigate this idea of journalism and storytelling. And so I had a friend of a friend who was a local news anchor at the ABC affiliate. And through conversations with her, I thought, should I go back to school? What should I, and she said, no, you'll learn the most by just diving into this and learning the ropes. And that's what I did. You're, you're pretty successful. You know, you've had a front row seat to a lot of events in history, you know, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, presidential elections, all of that. How have you seen the intersectionality of law and journalism evolve over your career? So many of our stories now, our top stories, are legal stories, whether it is a landmark decision at the Supreme Court, whether it's the indictment of a former president and how that plays out a first of its case, legal case. So I'm really grateful for my background as a lawyer because so many of the stories that we do take us into courtrooms, take us to emergency filings and stays and last minute emergency appeals. So I feel like often our lead story of the night is legal. Yeah, for sure. And I know a lot of predominant journalists, you think about Savannah Guthrie, Dan Abrams, they all have law degrees. Um, how does it particularly assist you when you're doing your journalism? I'm really grateful for the background because when I, in fact, interviewed for my job to cover the Supreme Court at Fox, um, the man doing the hiring, Britt Hume, at that point said he didn't want to interview anybody that wasn't an attorney. He wanted to make sure they understood the workings of the court. So I'm really grateful that the legalese, the technical, how to find the statute, how to find the briefing, how to read a motion. Um, I'm really grateful for the years of the, that experience that really helps me in covering the legal beat now. But I, I think too, probably the biggest thing I got from my legal years that benefit me now is research and writing. I mean, you're gonna do that all day as a lawyer and it's what I do all day as a journalist. Yeah, definitely. And can you touch on your experiences of having a front row seat to some of these monumental historical events. I know just recently you were on air for the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Can you talk about what those experiences are like, um, specifically as a lawyer, but also as a journalist? Yeah, when a legal decision of that import is coming in, you want to get it exactly right. And sometimes if it's a two or 300 page opinion, it's difficult. One of the tricks I learned from a former coworker of mine was flip to the dissent. Because when you see the grouping there, it often tells you more about the case than if you start at the beginning with a majority opinion. It's a good little nugget that's helped me many times. So you want to get it right. That's more important than being first. Um, but also as a journalist, there's that urgency. I mean, you, you are thankful that you are there in that moment, but you're often so much running on adrenaline that you really don't have a time to stop and think in that moment, this is a bit of history. It's maybe later in the day after you've done 15 live shots or the next day when you've had a night of sleep to think, gosh, that's something that I will talk about for decades to come. Where were you? What was it like? What did it mean? How did it reverberate? So I'm very grateful for those moments to get to be there. Shifting gears a little bit, I know that you just had a talk with a class about your faith and how that plays a role into your practice. Could you share with me about that and the challenges maybe that you face as being a woman of faith, but also being an attorney and a journalist at the same time? I think of it as an absolute net positive in my life. Um, it is the grounding factor for me. Um, when you travel around the world and you report on situations that are devastating, you see lives lost, you see destroyed families and homes, natural disasters. It's, it's hard to digest some of that and to see real suffering. So for me, my faith is the thing that gives me hope in that. It gives me the ability to um, know that faith is the place where you can't answer every question, but you have hope for the future. For me, that's what it is. Now, there have been times in my career where people thought that I was, quote, too churchy, that's the word that was used, um, that I maybe was too much about my faith, and I don't think I can be. I mean, to me, it is the core of who I am. Um, 
but I think there's a way to marry it together with what you do. I mean, I, for me as a, as a Christian, as a believer, I feel like I'm called to a standard of excellence that is, um, you know, you gotta be accurate, you gotta be hardworking, um, you've gotta be working for a higher purpose. Um, and so to me, that means everything I do needs to go to the next standard, the next level. Um, and I think that's a good thing as a lawyer or as a journalist to say that you want to, to no matter who comes across your work, whether they know you're a person of faith or not, to say that person works with excellence. How do you manage the bias of that, if there is any, when it comes to being a Christian, but also reporting on topics that may be controversial or things like that in Washington that are being decided? Yeah, and I, yeah, and I think that's true for any journalist. I feel like all of us come to the table with our own biases or opinions about things. And one of the biggest assignments of our job is to not let it bleed into our work. I also have to check that I don't overcorrect sometimes with that because I wanna be so sure that my personal feelings don't ever show up in my work or in my interviews. I wanna make sure that I'm probing both sides of any topic or any issue, um, both sides of the aisle. So I think we're all human beings, so we're gonna walk into whatever our job is with who we are and what we believe. Um, but for me as a journalist, I think one of the top things I have to do is make sure that it's not a part of my work. Definitely, and I know you're an author too. You've written two books. What made you decide to become an author and to write these books um, and to share your words and w of wisdom? It seemed like one of the impossible things. I would hear about people writing a book and think, how do you even do that? That seems kind of overwhelming. Um, and I actually, with a series of books I have now, Fox actually came to me a few years ago and said, we're thinking about getting into this space of books and we know your faith is an important thing. And we want to write books about faith and kind of meet people where they're at. So it felt like a wonderful opportunity. And I learned so much in the process. I did grow up reading all these stories from the Bible, but to do a deep dive on them. And as an adult, I felt like, gosh, I'm getting a whole new perspective on who these people were, the circumstances of their day, very different of, from what we have in the Western world. So um, it was a gift to me as much as I hope now to the readers, it's a gift to them too. Sure, and one last question. What words of advice would you offer to not only future lawyers, but future journalists? Do not take no for an answer. You'll hear it a lot, no matter what fields you go into, and it's very discouraging. But I meet people all the time in both of those fields who say, I wish I just stuck it out a little bit longer. I wish that I had fought for what I believed was my passion or my dream, if it's a career-related thing. So I would say, um, all you have to do is find that one person that says yes, and you'll probably have a ratio of like 100 to one of no to yes, but I'm still fighting it. Every time we try to get an interview with somebody with the White House or somebody on Capitol Hill, um, you gotta ask a lot, and you gotta work ways around those no's. So know that they're coming, they're not the final word, and just keep pushing through.